Welcome everybody to this JMC Minnesota EdFi onboarding training. It is November uh, 8th, 2021. Beautiful day here, at least in southeastern Minnesota. The sun is shining. I think it's supposed to be one of the last warm days here of the fall. Uh, so nothing better to do today than do some Minnesota EdFi onboarding. We're glad to have you and glad to be partners with you as you go through this process. Welcome. I'm Paul Freed. I'm the lead trainer at JMC. I've been with JMC for about 15 years. I work closely with our tech support team and our training team to make sure everybody here knows what they need to do for, as part of the EdFi onboarding process. The Minnesota Department of Education is in the process of transitioning all Minnesota public and charter schools to the EdFi form of data collection. For the 2021-2022 school year, JMC will be onboarding all remaining school districts to this new process. Today, we will walk you through the phases to start submitting data to the MDE via Ed5 for the remainder of the 21-22 school year. Here's what's on the agenda today. Now, if you haven't heard already, there used to be two stages to start, the initial steps and the staging, but you don't need to do those anymore. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Ed, I think the uh, October 31st said you don't need to do that anymore. I'll talk about that in just a moment. So we'll, we'll cover that in a moment. And then we'll talk about phase three, which is the staging, the starting production and phase four, which is the production environment. So what if you have questions? We are standing by ready to answer your questions. Simply use the Q&A chat feature in your webinar toolbar anytime a Q&A slide is shown. So the MD has determined that schools no longer need to complete the staging steps for the EdFi transition process. Here's a message from the MDE. I, I kind of condensed it here, but the MDE has decided to remove connecting to staging steps in the staging environment completely from the EdFi onboarding steps effective October 29, 2021. EdFi is here to stay, and it's our every intention to make the setup and use of it more friendly for each and every one of you. If you're sinking to the staging now, please move to the production before October 29th. If you've not done anything yet with your setup to Ed5, please only set up for production, leaving the staging steps out. So just say right now, at this point, you're only doing production. That And this message right here, I didn't write this straight from the MDE. So I don't think, nobody had any questions about that last time. I thought there might be some last time, but you're moving right to production. So let's get into it on with the show. Starting production. So first is to upload a Mars fall submission. No matter what you do, you always upload Mars fall submissions first. Prior to starting the EdFi onboarding, schools will complete the Mars fall file submission process to ensure your Mars submission is free of state report errors. This includes uploading an error-free Mars A and B file to the Minnesota Department of Education, the MD. Fun fact, students who are included in Mars and future EdFi submissions are denoted in James the office with a Mars checkbox on the View Student Data page in the General tab. Any student you'd like included in your Mars and future EdFi reporting will need to have the Mars checkbox checked. So two, three really important things here. I always start off by this training by telling people, if you wanna be successful with EdFi training, follow the directions we have here exactly. Do not deviate from them at all. We have helped many, 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 many schools transition to EdFi. Our tech support team has worked closely with our training team and our resources team to put these instructions together. Follow them exactly as we say. So the first thing is always when you're doing EdFi reporting, a submit an a error-free Mars A and B file and know which kids are being reported via Mars because those ones be reported via EdFi if their Mars checkbox is checked. So if you need to, scroll through your kids and, and, and see who has their Mars checkbox checked. You can be even fancier than that. Use the attendance student list function to see who has their Mars checkbox checked. But you want to know which kids you are reporting. Then we get to our school calendar setup. I'm gonna go through the other parts of the JMC setup really uh, more slowly. This I'm gonna go really quickly because by this time, since most of you are printing report cards, this should be done already. Set up your school calendar and JMC office for each JMC building you're reporting to Mars via EdFi so each school's term dates are correctly uploaded via the EdFi process. Each building must have a calendar set up including the following terms. First day of school, last day of school, all start term dates and end term dates are listed here. So I'm gonna go really quickly here because I think all of you have done this already. Go to attendance, calendar days in JMC office. Accurate EdFi data comes from an up-to-date school calendar. Setting your calendar in JMC is the first step in your attendance being calculated for you. Remember, attendance is one of the key components of the EdFi reporting and plays a part in your district's funding. Let's start at the district level for start and end dates and then move to the buildings for spe special days and term dates. Step one, select the first day of school and the last day of school. Step two, click the save button, which is over here. Step three, double click the gray bar on any district wide no school day to indicate there's no school for the entire day. So if I double click once, it'll say no school. Double click again, 
and it'll say no school in the AM, which is right down here. Double click again, it'll say no school in the PM. <coughs> Excuse me, my little bit, little chilly here. So you double click through those days. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Term dates refer to the days that grading terms in the school year are set to begin or end. Since different buildings can have different grading schemes, you'll need to set terms for each building. Step one, select the term dates radio button to be able to enter in the, and edit begin and end term dates. And then step two is double click the gray bar on the day that represents either the start or the end of the term to open the grading term dates editing window. That opens this window right here. You'll step three, place a check mark in the appropriate term. Step four, click the save button. So that's really easy to do there as well. There are special days. Special days are days that select grade levels are not in school. For example, your senior class may not have school the last few days while all their grade levels are in session. Begin setting in these non-instructional days at the building level. Step one, select the special days radio button. Step two, click the grade drop-down list and select a non-instructional day for the specific grade. Step three, double click the gray bar on the special day to indicate the grade level not in school for that date. So let's take a live look. Like I said, we're gonna do it quickly because you should have all done this already. If you haven't done this, there's gonna be a red uh, uh, message right up here. So if you haven't done this, that red message is gonna tell you you need to do this. So again, if you're doing report cards, this should be done already. We go first to the district level, attendance, calendar, days, <clears throat> Choose the first day of school, choose the last day of school, click save. If there's a day that there's no school here, so October 18th, there's no school, click, click. Change it to no school for the entire day. Double click again, click, click. No school AM, click, click. No school PM, click, click. This will take you right here back to having school all day. So very easy to do. Now I'm gonna set my term dates. Gonna to go to my high school, it needs to be done for each building. He's telling me here again, I need dates for quarter one and quarter two. I'm gonna choose my term dates. Let's say that November 1st, uh, November 5th is my last day of quarter one. I come here, click, click. And I say, this is quarter one end. So I check that box and click save. This is this quarter two start, click, click. Tells me here, I click quarter two start here and you're good to go. You'll know you're all ready when all the dates that you have uh, courses listed, all the grading terms have dates that are listed here. So one way to check that is to click this view term dates quick link on the right hand side and that'll tell you all the dates that you have listed there. So really easy to use inside JMC. Have a special day. There's our special day right here. Let's say our kindergartners don't go to school on the 23rd. I can choose my kindergarten students here are grade zero. Click, click, click. That'll change it to a no school day for those kids. When I go back to all grades, it's all listed right there. So if you have any questions about that, you can sure type that in. We've got our question and answer slide here. But like I said, I, I, in the last three or four of these, I've not taken any questions on the calendar. But if you got one, sure, go ahead and type it in and I'll be able to answer that question for you. But I'm gonna keep on moving because like I said, most people wanna get right to the heart of it, which is setting up their production. 2021, 2022 production key and secret. Your school will enter a unique production key and secret combination to serve as your connection from JMC to Mars via EdFi. The MDE created the EdFi Security Configuration Tool, ESCT, to create your production key and secret. Step one, click here to begin the ESCT process. That will take you out to that ESCT tool. Now, again, most of you have probably done this already, but if you haven't, you need to go out there. If you have any questions about the ESCT process, contact the MDE at the email that we have listed here. Now, before, I, if you've got a question, go ahead and ask it, but I'll tell you, when you go out to that, at that ESCT tool, it's not just getting your key in secret. You also need to put down that JMC is your, um, is your SIS provider. I think you might need to put some term dates and calendar things in there. I'm not sure, because again, that's all done on the MDE side, but don't go there and just get your key in secret and come back to JMC. Fill out all the pieces of information that you need <clears throat> when it gets to um, when you're in that ESCT tool. And how do you know what all those pieces of information are? Look at the screen, but more importantly, refer back to the MDE training because the MDE has got great training available for you to manage that ESCT tool. All right, no questions, I'll keep on rolling. Update your EdFi settings. Setting up your MDE EdFi connection with your school's JMC database begins with entering your EdFi settings by a JMC administrator. So you have to log in as a JMC administrator. Head to File, Administrator Options, JMC Office to set up your EdFi settings. Step one, click the EdFi settings link to access your school's EdFi settings. Fun fact, this will open the EdFi settings screen in a new window on your web browser. Now it's time to turn on the EdFi interchanges 
to pre for production, enter your settings and begin sending and receiving data. Step two, place a check mark in the enable EdFi interchanges checkbox to turn on the EdFi interchanges between JMC and the MDE. Step three, enter the new API and authentication URLs in the appropriate fields to connect to the MDE server. That's this one right here, right there. You can get them from the MDE as well, or you can copy them from this presentation. This presentation is in the, um, it's in the YouTube video under the description. So and if you go to the description and click see more, you'll see a link to download this document, which you wanna follow every time you go through stage four. I'll talk about that a little bit, but you also can grab these URLs listed right here. Step four, enter the new production client key and secret you obtained in the ESCT process in the appropriate fields. Step five, select the production environment using the implementation status dropdown list to change the environment from staging to production. Step six, click the save button to save your EdFi settings. Let's take a live look at setting those EdFi settings. So here we go. I'm gonna come here in my building. You only need to do it, no matter, you only need to do it once. And when you do it one building, it does it for all your buildings. Under file, down to uh, uh, administrator options. Sorry, file to administrator options. Scroll down here to EdFi settings. So again, under, under file administrator options to EdFi settings. Click on that, opens a new window. Make sure to check this box that says enable EdFi interchanges. Enter in your API URL and authentic authentication URL, right? Those are taken right from the, the, the MDE or from our presentation. Put in your unique client key and secret. Change your production stash to production. Don't do anything else on the screen. Don't check this box, don't do anything. Only follow these directions exactly as I have said, and then click save. And that's all there is to it, right? So this step is pretty easy. If you've got questions, go ahead and ask. Again, I, you know, I, if you've been part of one of my MDE trains before, you'll hear me say, just follow the directions. Don't check the boxes that don't need to be checked. Don't enter things in that don't need to be. Just do the steps we have laid out here, and that's going to get you to success. And one of the things to note about that is that I've had many schools tell us that we make the process as easy as possible. And I've had some schools do this whole process in two days. So you can do this, especially now that we're past getting to the end of the fall, people will have easier times doing um, their Mars A and B file as, as uh, error free because you're having to submit those anyways. All right, no questions, let's keep on rolling. Start your steps. Now that you've moved to the production environment, let's ensure that the JMC office data has been set up correctly to submit data to the MDE via EdFi. Go to Minnesota, right here, EdFi to start year, to begin working through the start year steps. Step one, complete the prep tab to ensure your JMC office data is set up correctly. Helpful tip, Place a check mark in the appropriate checkbox as you complete each item to track progress. So that's this prep tab right here. Now let's head over to the tables tab to begin importing school and LEA information from the MDE. Again, this is bringing information from the MDE into JMC. Step one, click the update all schools table button to download the latest MDE all schools table with information from all Minnesota schools. Step two, click the update all local education uh, agencies button to download the most recent MTE LEA list. Step three, click the update all post-secondary institutions button to download the latest MDE post-secondary institution list. Step four, click the update all courses button to update MDE state course codes. You only need to do this one time for the whole year because all this information is set at the state level and your, this particular step is only done once and it brings it all in. It's not gonna hurt anything if you do it more than once, but you only need to do it once. Go to the general tab in Minnesota at five start year to send your district calendar to the MD. It only needs to be done once for the whole district. That's why we put all buildings are listed right here. Step one, click the update calendar all buildings button to send the district calendar information to the MD. Wondering if you need to knock out any to do's on the students tab? Not at this moment, so you're good to skip it for now. So let's take a live look at the start your steps. If you have a question about the start your steps, now's a great time to start typing them in. All right, here we go. Let's go under Minnesota, EdFi, start year. Do these three steps. Make sure your new students have been registered and entered into your JMC database. That should be done already. 
Student lunch statuses have been updated, importing, uh, including importing school status from prior year. That should be done already, and your calendar should be done already as well. But if, if you've done them, make sure to check the boxes. Don't skip over this because if you get help from our tech support team, and they come in here and these boxes aren't checked, it's going to be confusing for them and for your team as well. Go to the tables tab, tab, click one button here. Now, what we did is we added messages in here for you. So once it's done, it's gonna tell you the date that it was done. And you know, from our training, you'll need to do it once for the whole school year. Click that button and it'll bring that information down there. And, and I, I always tell people, click the button, wait for it to give you some information down here because it's telling you information. And then click this button right here and wait for it to tell you the information that's been updated. Then go to general and update your calendar. This is the one thing, and I'll talk about this in the phase four, that you do need to do multiple times throughout the year. All right, let's see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions that have rolled in. So I think I'll keep on rolling. Working through errors. Now, now that you've updated all Ed5 tables and sent your calendar to the MDE, it's time to talk errors. Did you receive a few during the start year process or were you error free? Let's take a look at the next steps to keep both of you moving forward. First, if you are error free, if you are able to complete steps one through seven of the start year steps without any errors, your key and secret are successfully communicating with the MDE for EdFi, and you can move on to Minnesota EdFi onboarding phase four production. Yeah. Did you receive errors? If you received errors from performing steps one through seven, please contact the MDE at the email there to ensure your key and secret you entered on the EdFi settings page is correct. We've actually, we've updated that a little bit. The first thing you should do is go to that ESCT tool and make sure you filled out all the information. Because we have a few schools that are not filling out all the information. I said this before, I'll say it again. Fill out all the information there, who your vendor is and any of those fields. Then make sure your key and secret is correct. If it's not correct, generate a new key and secret and put it in there to make sure you can do this as well. So um, it, it, in essence, if you're getting an error here, it's either because not all the information is in the ESCT tool or you've not correctly copied your key and secret in here as well. Once you've put a new key and secret in there or updated information, then perform the following steps. Step one, enter the correct key and secret obtained from the MDE on the EdFi settings page per the instructions on the update EdFi settings sheet. Step two, complete steps one through seven of the start your steps until you're error free. All right, we'll see if anybody has any questions about that. I'll wait for a minute um, on this one to see if anybody has any questions, but it's pretty straightforward in this part here um, uh, to, to get that. Uh, you just wanna make sure again, you're, you're putting that production key and secret in there. They probably don't even let you generate a um, uh, key and secret for the, uh, the, for the phase that was prior now that they're having you go straight to production. So I think that's pretty straightforward there as well. So if you get errors, go to that ECSCT tool. Make sure you got everything in there, generate your new key and secret, put it in, and then run through those steps again. Phase four production. Now, this is the phase that you're going to do multiple times throughout the school year. So uh, what I mean by that is you're going to do it one time now, but you're going to repeat it over and over again, probably monthly, if not more, every time you're submitting your Mars A and B files. Now you can use this video and the attached document to every time you go through it, but you want to make sure you don't skip any steps. This is where people get into danger or get into trouble is they'll do it all of phase four production the first time. And then it's January like, ah, oh, I don't need to upload, upload a file this. And then all that does is it causes you problems, headaches, and it's going to cause you more errors. So you want to make sure every time you are submitting your Mars files, your ed files, and then your Mars files again, you follow every single step in this phase four production. That will help you be successful. And we all want you to be successful with the state reporting process. Welcome to the EdFi production environment. This fourth phase of the Minnesota EdFi onboarding process allows you to import, edit, and send in student program history and special education history data to the MDE with your live data. During this EdFi transition year, the steps laid out in this phase are to be completed every time you submit EdFi data from now until the end of the school year. This means you'll go through the phase four process during this initial Minnesota EdFi onboarding process and repeat these steps as you continue to make changes to your student enrollment and MARS data. This includes uploading an error-free MARS A and B files to the MD at the beginning of this process and also at the end. Once you've completed the MARS file submission process, you're ready to start submitting your data via EdFi to the MDE by completing the steps in phase four. All right. I'm going to keep on rolling. If anybody has any questions about that, then let us know. But again, I, and I emphasize at the beginning, just follow these steps. Upload your JMC calendar. 
The school calendar was completed earlier in the Minnesota Ed Pi reporting process. Now that you're in the production phase, let's upload the school calendar for each building in your district. Go to the general tab in Minnesota Ed Pi start year to send your district calendar to the MDE. Step one, click the update calendar all buildings button to send your district calendar information to the MDE. Helpful tip, update your calendar multiple times throughout the Ed Pi onboarding process to ensure the MDE has the latest information. Your calendar is super important. If you've got a snow day or whatever it might be, you wanna send it in. We, we say, just do it, it's, it's a click of a button, right? Just do it every time you're gonna start uploading files. That way you're not wondering, did I send that in or not? All right, if you have a question, go ahead and type it in, but I'll keep on rolling. Import program history and special education history. The program history and special education history are new terms for our Minnesota schools. Program history is to track student involvement in a variety of programs. Special education history is to track a student's history of special ed participation. These records, just like in Mars, are submitted for ed fire reporting. Go to Minnesota program and special education history. It's right over here to import program and special education history uh, um, records for all of your students at one time. Now, I tell folks, follow these directions uh, exactly. And I will give you a couple of hints to, to what to know here as well. Step one, enter 6121 in the begin date field to ensure all program history is converted for any enrollment records that were created and edited over the summer. The reason we do this is because we want to make sure that every record in this 21-22 school year is captured. If you put in there um, the third day of school, there might be something beforehand. It's good to all do it the same way because that's always going to be capturing all those items that are listed there. So why do we recommend 6 one 2021 Because it's, it's not worried about last year. So people say, well, we didn't start school. I mean, our, our database starts in, in July of 2021. Fine. That's true. But our recommendation is 6-1-2021 because then if you use that every time you get used to using it, it grabs all the files to convert them. Now, I did have a person in the last training say, well, Paul, the MDE told us that some of these schools need a date, a start, a begin date of the first day of school. And we have said we've not received at JMC any guidance on which files are the first day of school and what should be before the first day of school. So we, we have no guidance to give you there. So our best guidance is Put 6-1-2021, bring them all in. And if the MDE says, hey, you, you, you should update these to the first day of school, then you update those to the first day of school. That, that's what our recommendation is. You can use it however you want. This tool is there to help you take those Mars files and, and transfer them to program and special education history files so you don't need to do it manually. All right, helpful tip, leave all the record types checked. Fun fact, the end date field doesn't need a date entered. This ensures all records will be imported from the begin date to the current date. Step two, click the import button to convert program and special education history to the ed five format for the current school year. Step three, click the print import summary button to save the import summary as a PDF or the cancel import summary button to return to the homepage. Helpful tip, if you have trouble when editing program and special education history records, the import Summary PDF is a great tool for you and tech support to diagnose the error. Step four, review the import summary to see what program and special education history records were imported and which student records need to be edited. Helpful tip, the import summary report will detail how the record should be edited and guide you through the process. Here's a couple of really important things to note. Number one, when you see this import summary, and you're gonna see this many, many times throughout the next year, a couple things to note. Number one, you want to understand what's on this report. So take the time to review it. Number two, not everything on this report is an error or things that need to be updated. We tell you what needs to be updated. So right here, Asha Ali, right here, had a Title I record created. Nothing needs to be done. Zach Brady had a Title I record created. Nothing needs to be done. Tom Freed had a Title I record created. Nothing needs to be done. But Asha Ali had a sliper record that needs to have be edited and there's more information there. So when people look at something, they say, oh my gosh, I've got 120 things I need to update. You do not. Only when we tell you that something needs to be edited, do you need to update those. So take the time, the sooner that you get better at understanding the information on these error reports that the MDE provides through JMC, the more comfortable you're gonna be and the happier you're gonna be with this EdFi transition process. 
The last thing to note is when you print that, you all, the last thing to know is this, you always wanna print these import summaries to a PDF and you always wanna save them to a folder on your desktop. I would do it this way. I would take, do the date, 11, 08, 21, print, uh, import program and special education history, import summary, save it to a folder on your desktop. That way you can report, you can, you can look at it later. Fun fact, again, I'm repeating here, all program and special education history records will be imported for your students. Only update records on the View Student Data screen if the import summary instructs you to do so. So we tell you what needs to be imported. Let's take a live look at importing program and special education history. If you've got a question about it, now's the right time to start typing that question in. So we're gonna go to Minnesota, EdFi, uh, program and special education history to import program and special education history. It's gonna go to the first day of school. I wanna put 6-1-2021 in. Why do I wanna do that? Because that's what the JMC team said, right? And again, if you say, well, they, they, you know, the state that said that some things need to be the first day of school. If you want to put the first day of school in there, you sure can, but I would rather have you collect everything and then change those files that need to be the first day of school. Leave everything else up uh, checked and click import, and that's going to import that for you. That's all there is to it. Super easy step. Then when you click that import, it's going to show you that import summary here, but you're only going to see it one time. There's no way to get back to this import summary. So you're going to print it to a PDF save it to a folder on your desktop. You probably have multiple folders on your desktop for the different types of import summaries we have because there are multiple import summaries. All right, updating a student's program and special education history. Some program history and special education records will need additional information added depending upon the latest MDE requirements. During this process, your import summary PDF will come in handy. Review the summary and take note of the student records that need to be edited and the next steps indicated. And again, I wanna say the sooner you just delve into them and understand what they're, the happier you're going to be. Head to the View Student Data and James the Office to add additional information to a program or special education history if indicated on the import summary report. Step one, find the student. Step two, click the program history tab to edit the student's program history record indicated on the import summary report. Step three, click the edit button to edit the specified program history record. Step four, enter the required information on the import summary report is requesting using the appropriate fields and dropdown list. And again, the report will tell you that information. And step five, click the update button to save that information. Now you're gonna edit the special education history, very similar. It's actually way over here. Click the special education history tab to edit the student's special education history record indicated on the import summary. Now. Before somebody asks a question here, some people will say, Paul, I don't see the special ed history tab. That's because you haven't done the previous steps. We don't even pop, put a special ed history tab on your screen until you import your special education history for the first time. So if you have not done anything, you go here, you're not gonna see a special ed history tab. You won't see it until you import it for the first time. So you go to that special ed history tab, step two, click the edit button to edit that record. Step three, enter the required information. Step four, click the update button, and then you're good to go. So let's take a look at that. If you have any questions, you can start typing them in now. I'm gonna to go to the view student data screen here. Find a student. Okay. It's easier if you spell their names correctly. Also, I've got to be on my kindergarten. We go to all my active kids here. There we go. Where's my John? Oh, I didn't change it. Look at that. Put on a little show here. Here's all my active kids there. There we go. All right, here we go, M-C-E-L. There is gonna be John, okay? Now it tells me, hey, John needs a record uh, you know, updated. So I'll go here, maybe to my program history record, and click edit. And it's gonna tell me I need to update the unaccompanied youth box, checkbox, wherever it might be. Now you might say, well, why do I need to update this information? There, there can be a few reasons. One of the biggest reasons is that with Mars, right? So this is the Mars record for, for John. I, when John is marked homeless, it simply has come here where I'm marking him as homeless here, which is again, the drop down double up. Well, EdFi wants to collect more information than just what this homeless item is here. So when it's brought over, right? So this homeless item is brought over as a program history tab, this is created for you. And, and the, the record by, or that report might tell you, hey, if John is a, uh, an unaccompanied youth, make sure to check the unaccompanied youth checkbox or whatever it might be. And then you check that right there or choose the school that's listed there, whatever it be. That, uh, that 
the report will tell you what needs to be done. And then you'll, you'll change that here and then click update. And then you're good to go. The same as with the special ed history right here, I can edit this and I can edit any of this information that you have listed here. And then I can click update. Now, here's two really important things to know every single time you update information for your students or you're gonna submit Mars files and EdFi files. Number one, we don't fill in an end date and you don't need to either until the, the, till the MDE tells you. This is a question we've gotten frequently. Well, I've got an end date for this particular, should I put it in there? Well, you can if you want to, we're not telling you not to put it in. If you've got an end date, go ahead and put it in there. But our rule of thumb always is we don't do something until the MDE tells us because we don't want to put something in and then have it be wrong. So if the MDE tells you to put a, sped, uh, a special ed end date in for these records, go ahead and do it. If they don't tell you to, so for example, with this um, this one that is uh, homeless or whatever it might be, um, if, they, if they're not requiring you to put an end date in, unless maybe the kid, of course, then is not homeless anymore, you sure could do that. But that is up to you to decide with the MDE if you want to put end dates in. That's number one. Number two, probably even more important. If you update something on the Mars tab after you uh, imported these things, right? Because there's no connection between this file here, a record here, and this record here, right? We took this and we imported it to program history and special education history for you. That's, that's all that's been done. And that's all the MDE wants us to do. If this student now, John McElmurray, who before, if I come to this edit side here, if before if he was doubled up, if he now is in a hotel or motel, if I change it here and I click update, I have to edit the corresponding program history record or special ed history record as well to match. So I'm gonna come here and click edit. And this is the whole part, port, uh, excuse me. There we go, I'll put in here two hotels. This is the whole point of you comparing your files at the MDE site. The MDE wants to make sure that you understand what's listed in your Mars, Mars record here is how it corresponds to your program history and special education history as well. So once they're imported, if you make any changes to a student's Mars record, you most likely are gonna to have to edit their program history or their special ed history um, information as well. All right, here we go. So if kids' lunch status changes, you gotta enter it in both spots as an example. All right, I didn't see any questions come in. So I will keep on rolling. If you've got a question, go ahead and ask it. Update students by grade level. In Mars, you would create and upload a Mars A and B file with student data to be sent to MDE to fulfill your state reporting requirements. Now in EdFi, simply update the students by grade level to send their data to the MDE. Go to Minnesota, EdFi, update students by grade level to get started. Step one, select a grade level in the grades dropdown list to submit data. Step two, click the Minnesota EdFi update students by grade level button to send student data to the MDE for that grade level. Helpful tip. Once you click the Minnesota EdFi Update Students by Grade Level button, do not delete a student because their record now exists at MDE. Fun fact, your data will now be validated by MDE and an error report will be generated displaying any errors with the student data. So let me say a couple things about this. First, at the end of this presentation, after the thank you slide, I'm gonna to continue to go through a um, appendix that has some very common errors. So you wanna to refer to that right away if you ever look at errors, number one. Number two, Every school will get a 400 error for every grade level, most likely, the first time you send it in. Because the first time you send it in, this 400 error is gonna tell you, hey, these kids are not in the EdFi database. Why aren't they? Because it's the first time you've sent it. So you can expect to get a 400 error for all of your grade levels the first time you send it in. What's the thing that you should do? Just send the data in again, and then the students will be there, and they'll be like, oh, great. Thanks for all those students there. All the students are right in there. So the first time you do it, you'll get a 400 um, error. Um, then also, once you get this error report, right, again, it'll look just like this. You'll want to come in here and click the print summary button to save the summary as a PDF or the cancel summary button to return to the Minnesota EdFi update students by grade level page. If you're into trouble with editing student data, the summary PDF is a great tool for you and tech support to diagnose the error. This is the last time I'll say this. You want to make sure to print these error reports to a PDF Save them to a folder in your desktop, 11, 08, 21, update students by grade level, grade zero error report, whatever you want to name it. So you can refer back to it and then, then we can help you with that. Now, if you have an error that you can't figure out, save the error summary you are receiving to a PDF. Now, I want to say one thing first. The first thing you want to do is you want to try to figure it out on your own, right? You don't want to send JMC tech support a list of 71 errors because if you don't learn it right away as fast as you can, then you're gonna keep having that same issue and over and over again. So you wanna take this error report 
and you want to make sure to go through it and answer as many of them as you can. And then if you have an error that you need help with, you want to make sure that you print it to that PDF. Once you've saved it to a PDF, and I'm right here in this print part right here, you, uh, you have a couple of options to help you move forward with error correction. The first is print out the error report to a PDF or paper copy for easy reference as you work through the different types of messages you're receiving. So a lot of people will do that. If you need a helping hand, don't worry, we are here to help. Always email the PDF to support at jmcinds.com and we can give you a helping hand. Now, here are some important things to note, right? When you, up, when you upload that error report here as well, okay? You wanna do it with screenshots or PDFs of the errors. Don't hide the student names, right? We need to see them to help you, right? We also, we don't want you to call the tech support line or contact us to tech support direct, directly, okay? We want you to send it in via the ticket system because we have a team of people that can help you. And the fastest way to get your errors, uh, help you with your errors is to send it into support. Don't send it to, to Eric or whoever it might be, or don't even call into the tech support. Because if you call tech support, the first thing they're gonna tell you is, hey, can you email it in? Because we wanna see the exact error report with the student's name so that we can help you. If a tech support person then emails you back about the error, please communicate directly with that person until the issue is resolved. If you have another issue after that, send it in via the ticket system. Why is this? Well, A, we wanna help you quickly. And B, we're helping lots of schools send in error reports. So if a person, if, if tech support person A is helping your school and tech support person B is helping another school and you start communicating with both the people in both areas, it, it's confusing to us and it can become confusing to you. And we don't want you to be confused. We want you to get help right away. So make sure to send that air report in to support and whoever emails you back, work with that person until it's done. And then if you have another area you need help with, start a new ticket by sending that email of that, that um, PDF into support at jmcinds.com and we'll help you with that as well. Make sure you know, my last little bit of advice, how to read and utilize the comparison report before sending anything to JMC, right? Because the comparison report is what helps you understand what's going on in Mars and what's going on at EdFi. The, again, the sooner you learn how to manage that, that comparison report, the happier you're going to be as well. We don't want you to just send us Mars numbers for students from your comparison report. We do need the full details, including names, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> excuse me, names of issues from your comparison report, okay? We actually can't access your comparison report. So if you do some digging into the report, send us those full details because that's how we're going to help you most quickly. Currently, um, you may get an early education student parent association error. It can be ignored. The MD is looking into why that error is being generated. And lastly, we want to make sure typically that you're using Chrome or Firefox because those are the browsers that are going to work best with the MDE and JMC for your error reporting. We're here to help you help yourself first get on top of those errors and the ones that are kind of sticky that you can't quite figure out, let us know and we'll give you a helping hand. All right, step four, review the summary to see what student data was uploaded and if any additional information needs to be added to a student's record, just like we talked about. The helpful tip, and that's what I talked about before, you import them and then you can, uh, after you import them, we're now running this error report and then you can edit them again. Helpful tip, the summary report will detail how the record should be edited and guide you through the process. Step five, repeat steps one through five for all grade levels until all errors are addressed for each grade level. Fun fact, if your submission was successful and error-free, move on to creating and submitting news, new Mars A and B files. Let's take a look at updating students by grade level. If you've got a question about this at this point, go ahead and start typing it in. Here we go, go back to my home screen. I'm gonna go to Minnesota, Ed5 update students by grade level, I do grade zero, click that, it might run for a minute or two, right? And um, and uh, once that runs and it's done, give you some information. If you've got any errors there, it's gonna take you to this screen right here. It'll print that to a PDF, save it, click your cancel summary if you want to, and then you'll come back here and you'll do it for your next grade level right on done list. Now you'll notice fi your, your files are sent in by grade level for the whole district, <clears throat> right? I was talking to TCU school last week. They have three elementaries, right? You're not creating A and B files for each elementary. You're sending one file for grade one and sending that in. And then if you are not the one to update these errors or, or, or edit the error information, you'd send that to all three elementaries and say, hey, here's all the errors. 
please uh, um, update your students and um, then let me know and I can resubmit that information right there as well. It's easier actually to do this way because you're not creating those files for each building that are listed there. So you'll get that error report. And then once you get that error report, you go back to the view student data screen, look at your program history tab and edit that or your special ed history tab and edit that or any other information that it might be. It might be telling you that you need to update maybe um, the students race ethnicity or information like that. You'll update that and then you'll be good to go. All right, keeping on rolling. If you have questions on how to fix errors, please attend one of our week. Uh, it's actually not weekly now. I think it's every two or three weeks we're having uh, EdFi onboarding Q&A sessions or check out the FAQ located in the appendix. Make sure to wait until the FAQ at the end of this because that's the first thing you want to do once you start getting errors is to access the FAQ. All right. Then you can update a student. Oh, hold on here. Okay. Somebody is calling me there. Let's, I'll just let that go to my voicemail. So I apologize about that. Then update a student. Now, during the process of fixing student errors, you may find that you only need to resubmit data for a handful of students. In this case, there's no need to send in data for all the students in all the grade levels. Instead, we'll correct the data student by student. I mean that when you send in your grade level student there, what happens is it can take a little bit of time, right? Because lots of schools are sending data in. Maybe you only have three or four kids. You want to send them in, lickety split, there you go. Head to Minnesota EdFi Update Student to submit data for a specific student to the MDE. Step one, enter the student's name in the Minnesota EdFi Update Student dropdown list and select the student for whom you'd like to resubmit data. Fun fact, the student's name, state ID, and other identifying information are listed here. Step two, click the Minnesota EdFi Update Student button to begin resubmitting EdFi data for this student. Helpful tip, repeat this process for additional students that need EdFi data submitted. So this is again, is really easy. If you've got a question, you can ask. I don't think I've taken any questions on this because it's pretty darn easy. I'll come here under Minnesota EdFi, update student. I can put the student's name in there and click the update student and it will send in just for that student. So really easy to do there. All right, keep on rolling creating and submitting new Mars A and B files. Now it's important to note, after all of your EdFi data has been uploaded to MDE and is error-free, you will need to create and upload a new Mars A and B file to compare your EdFi submission. This is what kicks in the comparison process on the Minnesota EdFi site, right? The comparison report will not be started until you do this, um, uh, until you submit this Mars A and B file after you've done your EdFi. So you have to do this every single time you submit your EdFi, your files there. So is there, if there's any question about that, go ahead and start typing them in here. But that's something where people I think are saying, oh, I, I, I have an error-free Mars A and B file. Now my EdFi is error-free. I'm gonna go to my comparison report. I'm like, well, where's the comparison report? They don't see what they're expecting. You need to upload your Mars A and B file. Why do you need to do that? Well. You might have submitted your Mars A and B file a week ago and it was error free. And then you do this EdFi information, maybe over the week you're updating information in JMC, a new kid comes or something like that, whatever it might be. You need to make sure that as soon as you're done with your EdFi error free submission, you want to again upload that Mars file because you got to get that to be error free to match because the comparison wants to match exactly the same information. All right, no questions there. So what's next? Now that you've submitted error free student data for all of your students, you've completed the Minnesota EdFi reporting process. A JMC recommend going through this process at least once a month to ensure Mars data and corresponding EdFi data is correct as you move towards the end of the year reporting. So any questions about that? Yes, we've got a question. I love it. Here we go. Jessica says, after EdFi is error-free and you upload your A and B files and they aren't error-free, do you have to resubmit er, er, uh, EdFi reporting before doing the comparison report? My understanding is no, Jessica, because, because your EdFi is error-free, you would then go in and you would update that, that um, your Mars A and B file to match what's in EdFi. Now, my assumption there though, is you're doing it in a short amount of time, right? If your EdFi is, is error-free today and I upload a Mars A and B file and it's got some errors in it and I, I go three, four, five days, right, without going back and resubmitting my, my EdFi, well, then you probably would have to do your EdFi again. So the key there is that once you've got that error-free EdFi, get your Mars error-free as quickly as possible. And there shouldn't be much, right, Jessica? I mean, you've already had an error-free EdFi file. You know, it's not like you have 
30 kids coming and going every day from your school, I'm guessing. Um, so the, the chances that it's going to have a lot of errors are pretty slim. So you want to come in, just do the EdFi. If you've got air, Mars error, you want to come in and edit that, then go back and do your EdFi real quick. And then you should be good to go. But that, that it's, uh, I think it's pretty rare because people are, are, are trying to do those things in a concise time. So it, Jessica Graham, gold star for you for answering a great, great question. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, but don't go anywhere yet. We've got the appendix. The appendix is where I'm going to start the Q&A session. I think I've got a Q&A session on Thursday at 11 o'clock, if my memory serves me correctly, we go through these errors. So here's some errors that you're going to see. Have this ready. I'd actually print out this error report, if not this whole presentation to have with you as you go through the process, because then you can quickly fit to the page that you want. So error type number one, user, yikes, I received a 400 error. Typically, these errors are data communication errors, but not always. Like I said, it can be other things, but, they, but you want to just come in and try clicking the Minnesota EdFi Update Students by Grade Level button again to resubmit your grade level data. So it's going to happen the first time. That's what I'm saying. Not always. The first time, it's just saying, hey, you got no kids there. Um, and then you submit it again, you're good to go. You can also have a communication error where maybe the MDE site is bogged down or the JMC site is running slow, whatever. If that happens, wait up 10 minutes, resubmit again, or at the end of the day or early in the morning the next day. Uh-oh, I'm starting to panic. I see a 403 error for the majority of my students on both of my reports. James C., no biggie. Resend the data for the grade level or student again. If you continue to receive 403 errors for your students, send the error report to support at jamescience.com with a screenshot and any details as well. Because 403 errors, if you can't solve them, can have a variety of ways they need to be adjusted. So we want to make sure that you, um, uh, we want to make sure to help you get those figured out as soon as possible. Oof, I'm getting to this error, Early Education Student Parent Association error. This, again, I said this before, this can be ignored. The MDE is looking into why that error is getting generated. So it doesn't mean you did anything wrong. The MDE is figuring that out on their side. Error type number four, I'm getting an error about invalid character in a student's name. James C., most likely there's a period in the student's middle name. Go to edit student data and remove the period from the student's middle name in the middle field. User, I'm getting an error about missing or incorrect ancestry information. James C., most likely a field was left empty. So you'll go to edit student data, click the race ethnicity tab to enter missing information for that student. Again, these are all things, common errors that we've seen that we want to kind of cue you into so you can get to right away. Whoops, I reported a student to both Mars and EdFi that I should never report at all. This is done really uh, typically in the early on stages, uh, the start of the school year, not as much later on, but this is a simple fix that only takes a few steps to correct. Go to the Minnesota EdFi delete student, find the student and delete them from the EdFi portal, then uncheck their Mars flag. And then that's it, there's to it. And that's all the errors that I have. So I appreciate all the time that you folks have spent on this. Uh, it's underappreciated. You know, I do tell folks at the end that uh, once you get done with your, your first ever um, production phase, give, pat yourself on the, on the back and then, you know, run through the office and say, hey, I'm done with my first production phase. People are going to look at you like you're crazy because they don't know what you're talking about, unless you've been complaining about it, you know, which we all like to do. But go out and buy yourself a, something to eat or a snack and take it home and, and, and say, hey, I did something at my, my district that's helping the whole district out. Uh, it might not be as appreciated, but we appre appreciate it um, at JMC because we know it's hard work for you and your team does too. But we want you to know, treat yourself a little bit because it's a big thing to get this process done. So follow the directions. Let us know how we can support you. If you have any other things, let us know. Thanks for your time today, and thank you for choosing JMC.